Welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast with Mike Kincaid and Jake Goebel. Join them as they experience specialty coffee and document their journey. These friends explore roasts and roasting methods, brewing equipment and techniques, and review the cafes they visit along the way. Thanks, Bruni, and thank you for joining me for episode 124 of the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast. Mike embarrasses me by getting me to talk about my ganache experience. James reminds us that someone is always watching, always looking. We talk about the brew tip of the week and a little bit of decaf. I think it's a good one. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast. I am Jake Goebel. With me is Mike Kincaid. And this is a show about you. This is a show about your dreams, your aspirations, and how coffee can fuel them. We not only run a podcast, but we also have a YouTube channel. We have an Instagram account, a Twitter handle, a Facebook page, and a website with a and, blog post. Yeah, and a... Vivo, Vero. 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 Account. There it Have you is. been posting anything to Vero lately? It's been a little bit. Okay, sorry about it. that. Sorry about that. We need to get back on the Vero. What is Vero? Vero is another social platform. Mm. Ooh, that is pretty. Vero. Vero is pretty. It is pretty, yeah. Vero's pretty. Makes the pictures look pretty. So great. if you're not Ooh. on Vero, we need to get on Vero together. You and me you gotta, on Vero. You got to update Vero. Talking about coffee. And what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about how coffee fuels your passions. And enables you to accomplish what you want to, whether that is by getting you highly caffeinated <laughs> for the day and energizing you, or whether it's by giving you a time out, just a time away from what it, <laughs> some time away from your regular grind to where you can have a moment for yourself. Moment of clarity. <laughs> An experience, as it were. An experience to enjoy. So I can't get one note to sync. I got nothing. I got nothing what for the show you notes. You're going to have to take this one, Mikey. You're going to have to lead this one. You can't so, get one note to work. So we'd love... <clears throat> let, let's see. What, what what do we want? Yeah, what's your intro? Did you give it? I think That's so. your intro. I, I want to give you a great intro, but there should, shouldn't there be a call to action? Or should, is that for the end? We also let you behind the scenes, behind the curtain of trying to run and start a coffee business. I mean, not only are we trying to fuel your hopes and dreams and what you want to do, but also we want to show you the nuts and bolts of trying to do something new, trying to start a business, as it were. And then also kind of like a just a marketing company, really. We're trying to be everywhere, always. Everywhere, always. Yeah. Always, everywhere. I think that's a commercial slogan. Oh, I don't want to use that then. I don't want to get sued. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. All right. Um, but I agree with you. I think, uh, right, trying to run or start your own business, it's not very glamorous. It's scary. It's a lot oh, of a lot work. A lot of work, yeah. I mean, People say that. I mean, they say it's a lot of work, but then you're like, for real, I want to go sit and kick it with the fam or do this or that or the other thing, and you can't. You got to get the work done. There's a lot of sacrificing that has to be done. done. Yeah. And I think that's something that must be calculated, contemplated is do you truly want that? Oftentimes, we find ourselves liking the idea of something. I I think we like the idea of freedom. In our mind, we think to ourselves, okay, I've got my regular nine to five. If I but worked for myself, I would have more time to spend with my family. Freedom. I would have freedom, financial freedom or whatever it is. Nobody telling me what to do except for me. And the reality is that's not the case. Dancing for the man is not a bad place to be. Because when you clock out, you're done, bro. Just Uh, go home and you're done. If I'm going to be here, you're going to pay me. Exactly. No, oftentimes you find out when you you start, uh, you know, some entrepreneurial endeavor that you you don't like the boss very much your um, boss sucks because <laughs> you totally... your boss is you and that jerk treats you so bad yeah there's kind of two pillars right two uh spectrums or different types of bad bosses one is the micromanager that demands and expects a lot uh unrealistically mm-hmm. and the other is checked out and just says you know what i don't i don't care what you do you just get it done don't get it done 
you know, figure it out on your own. Gives you no guidance. <laughs> and throughout the course of the week, you will probably be both of those bosses to yourself. <laughs> That's the, right. Uh, Seth Godin, he wrote an article about that. We quoted that probably a year and a half ago or so, where he says, you would not put up with a uh, boss who treats you the way that you do, yeah. who talks to you the way that you talk <laughs> to yourself, and who demands of you what you demand of yourself. Exactly. Shut up. I'm working. Yeah. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah. It makes you um, so work nonstop all the time. It is something yeah. to definitely consider. And I think w- one thing you can do practically, um, and, and I think it's a good thing if, you, if you, your situation allows it, is test it. If you can um, say, okay, in order Don't for me... Don't go all in? Well, if you, yeah, if there's something to test it, if you can calculate it, say, I, I want to roast coffee. I'm going to use what I have, and I want to sell it. Um, let's say, for example, I get 10 orders this week. I'm going to do it full case study right here. Uh, I got 10 orders this week. I need to get them out, get them done, get them packaged. And you do that throughout the week as if orders are coming in. And you get to the end of the week and you assess, okay, can this be more knock out that many? Is that reasonable expectation? Is it not? You know, I mean, just if you have the ability to, on a small scale, test out your theory and see if you have the time or the power, the resources, the money, um, that could be helpful. And then you say, okay, what if I get 20 orders? What about running a cafe? Exactly. What does that practically look like? And for us, it's been a combination, to be honest, of just, you know what, we'll figure it out. Let's just, Let's just throw start. caution to the wind and Let's go for it. and see what happens. And I think you need a little bit of that. Yeah. Because if you start analyzing everything, You'll never start. you're never going to move. Never going to start. But it's good to have a realistic expectation of the sacrifices and the challenges Um and something that we were just talking about, and we don't have to camp here, that we think is very, very important when starting a journey like this is having someone to help you. Having a partner, having a support group, having a couple partners, you know, uh, that you can rely on, that can keep you focused, that can pick you up, that can share the vision, share the dream. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I, I can say definitively, I wouldn't be doing this anywhere to this level i might just be enjoying good coffee but that's it yeah without you know partnering with jake you'd be much happier i'd probably be a lot happier yeah yeah less anxiety goes without saying yeah i'd probably less stress less stress less pressure yeah marriage would be better yeah relationship with the kids would be better everything would be better yeah everything would be Mm -hmm. better you know you got me you got me wondering yeah should we turn it off? I got to no. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I left something in the car. I'll be right back. Point being, if you can find somebody <laughs> that shares your vision and they can be a compliment to you in some respect, um, I think that is one of the most valuable things. Very few can do this on their own. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. So anyway, is yeah, that our intro? Nice. That was the intro, I guess. What's, I thought you were moving on to point one. I don't know. I, it's still not sinking. What's the intro? Yeah, one note still not. What do you say? You have intro, outro. What's yeah. the middle? It's just the body. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. You have the head, you the body, and the feet. Well, it would be um, a mid roll, is what they call it. It's okay, when it, like an advertisement in the middle. Cue Listen. the mid roll. This podcast is brought to you by Mike's Hour. Mike's Hour, an hour of torture. Something along those lines. Oh. Yeah, you, know, you do a read. You do a commercial read. We don't have any sponsors for this show, in case you were wondering. It's just Mike and I, and just doing it. what it is that we do. We don't, you know, we're not, we haven't, we're not actively pursuing sponsors. I mean, there's three kind of ways for you to make money, right? Uh, Gary V says you, you provide or you buy ads. So if you create a show that's popular, and then you try to monetize it by having advertisers on the mm-hmm. show, yeah. we've never keep we, the lights on. We've not done that. Keep However, coffee. I. I'd like to reserve the right to at least pursue it to try and find the right partner sometime in the future. Sure. There's also a product. That is something that we do. Sell coffee, you know, whatever widget it is that you're trying to make, whether it's a digital informational widget or whether it's a physical widget to make your life easier. Those are kind of... Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's both. And then the third thing is your service. Like, um, I was thinking about my man, the coffee legend, Scott Rayo. 
Mm. He has a coffee service, a consulting service, where he comes out and helps you roast, helps you set up your cafe, whatever it is that you need that's coffee related, he comes out and, and helps you. Yeah. And that is, you know, he's an entrepreneur. Provides a service. Provides a service. So those are kind of the three ways that you can monetize your brand. And uh, Gary was talking about, you know, don't, you said, be patient, but you got to have a plan. And that kind of slapped me right in the face. It was like, oh, you mean we shouldn't just be patient and just put out a bunch of content? Yeah. We should I like actually have a goal of where we're trying to get to? And Gary said, yes, yes, you should. And I was like, okay, well, maybe we'll have a goal someday. What is your plan? But I mean, right now, our goal, I guess, would be to sell coffee, sell products. I mean, we do uh, but, share information, but we just don't share what we learn, but we don't, we don't push real hard on, on the coffee sales, you know? And, and I really, it doesn't bother me that you don't buy any coffee. You just listen to the show. I'm honored that you would listen to the show. Really, totally blown away. Absolutely. That you would listen to the show. And the fact that you haven't bought any coffee from me is totally cool. Yeah. I'm just honored to be here with you. Yeah, that's so. a great point. And I think that's a perfect segue, Jake, into your ganache story. Ganache. Oh, <laughs> oh we had to go there. Oh. Uh, so. I don't know how that segues, to be honest. The, just the coffee was. legend. Was it James? Freeman. Freeman. Freeman is blue, blue bottle. bottle. Okay. They make their mochas with ganache. Ganache. Can ganache. I get that ice? No, you cannot. No, you cannot. The ganache because we will ganache solidify. Because the ganache will <laughs> solidify. So, no. No, you may not. So, this is what I did. I was like, you know what? I got a little bit of chocolate left over. I had like 85% super dark chocolate. Is there any other? Yes. There actually is. Oh. And the missus tried to get me to use it. She handed me a Hershey bar out of the fridge. And she's like, make it out of this. Milk just chocolate. Like that. Just like she doesn't Milk. listen to the show. So I can, I can make her sound however I want. Make it out of this. I was like, baby, no, please stop hitting me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> so I decided on Saturday I was going to make her a mocha because we keep forgetting to buy more syrup. Monin is kind of the go-to. You like it, Monin? Monin is probably the best syrup that I've, that I've tasted. Hershey's is just too sweet and so it just doesn't taste real good. What's the other one? A Ghirardelli's yeah. is a little too chalky. And okay. neither of them um, Tarani mix is, they well. Have their own? Tarani, I think Tarani and Monin are the same company, but I could be mistaken. Probably not, though. I think Tarani makes... So, anyways, we're going to find out. <laughs> are we? We're going to find out. Leave that there. I'm not going to find out right yeah, now. Let, let Tarani reach out to us and tell Tarani, us. do you want to sponsor <laughs> the show? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tarani makes like flavored syrups. Yeah. Wait. I thought we were talking about syrups. Yeah. Well, we were talking about um, chocolate syrup for mochas. Press uses Monin. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the shops use Monin. It's very popular. So you ran out of Monin. Popular. I ran out of that, and I ran out of, um, uh, what was it, uh, caramel sauce. Then we, we bought big jugs of both. The, the caramel sauce. Yeah, see, they, here's Tarani. Peach, coconut, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, vanilla, watermelon, mango, blue raspberry, blackberry, salted caramel or caramel, and a syrup dispensing pump. That's what they have for you. No chocolate. No chocolate? No chocolate. And that's why you have to do ganache. That's why you do mo. What is ganache? Ganache is a thicker kind of, it depends. There's different types of ganache, which you find out as soon as you start trying to uh, this can be make simple. ganache. I got chocolate. Yeah, I got Type chocolate. It in. So anyways, ganache. ganache. So you chop that up. There's a couple different recipes. The one I used was this. You chop up the chocolate with a serrated knife to try to rip chunks as small as you can. And then you add boiling cream, heavy whipping cream, or half and half into the chocolate. You let it sit for a minute, and then you stir it up. Okay. So it's a mix of chocolate and cream. A mix of chocolate and cream. Now, there's other recipes out there, and I think Blue Bottles is chocolate and water. And that allows it to mix a little better. Oh, but if viscosity? you start, yeah, if you start whisking it too soon, then it starts to get like chunky and powdery and whatnot. It's not good. How so to you make have ganache. to let it dissolve a little bit, and then you can mix it up. But then you find out there's different types of ganache. There's like cake ganache, mm -hmm. coffee ganache. Who knew? Who knew that there were so many different types of ganache out there? What type did you go with? I went with, I think I made the cake ganache. I think I made the wrong ganache because I used the heavy, I used the half and half. I used boiling half and half 
And then I was looking at it. It was a one-to-one ratio. And I was like, this doesn't look right. And then the missus was like, do a two-to-one ratio. And I never do this. I never deviate from the recipe. Yeah. I am a rule keeper by nature. I follow the recipe. Anyways, the missus swayed me. And I veered and it didn't turn out well at all. What happened? It was too liquidy. It wasn't chocolatey enough. And it wasn't very sweet. So I made the So it wasn't good. No, it was horrible. It was the worst mocha I've ever had before in my life. (laughs) And you know who made it? Me. That is so good. You've made, that's perfect. I have made the worst mocha I've ever had. And the missus drank it because she's a trooper. And because she loves me, and then mm, I made this the is good. Good night. No, 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 no. <laughs> she didn't. She, didn't, she pulled no punches. Job, honey. She, zero punches were pulled, but she drank it. Mm. Zero punches were pulled. Is your tummy hurt? <laughs> and, then, um, <laughs> and then the kids wanted. To, I had some I can't leftover. Find how to make it? And they were like, "Hey, um, just go. put ganache recipe." There we go. Yeah. That's a good idea. And so, not to be kids, confused with ganache. The kids the were singer. like. <laughs> Thank you. I was <laughs> I was a little confused. So the kids were like, hey, can you make me some hot cocoa out of that? And so I was like, I don't know what to do. The kids aren't going to drink this. It's nasty. And so what I did was I added some simple syrup oh, and mixed it up. I thought you were going to say sugar. And then I said, it's sugar. Yeah. yeah. Sugar and water, some simple syrup. I okay. added it. And then we tried it, uh, and it was still nasty, was, but the kids oh. the kids drank it. It was not terrible gross, this is good, but it was not good. No, they didn't. No, no punches are pulled. No, nobody said this was good. They said, this is not very good, but it's okay. I'm going to finish mine in the bathroom if that's okay. <laughs> So then I realized, you know what? It's not as easy as it looks. It's it, or it's not as easy as it sounds. As yeah. Blue Bottle makes it sound in their book. And of course, I didn't walk all the way downstairs to get the book and bring it upstairs. Maybe you should try the book. Maybe you should try the book next time. Maybe that's a good BR. Maybe Rune instead review. of BR. Jake makes ganache. We should live. totally do that. Jake's ganache. <laughs> Jake's ganache. We should definitely do that. The next time we should do it on the... Um, that way, people will have more things to pull a, pick apart than just... That I'm an idiot on the Breville Barista Express. You're not an idiot. That's what you just don't know what you're doing. (laughs) (laughs) So we should do that. We should make some ganache. We should see what's better: the ganache or the ganache off. The moment (laughs) ganache off. I thought you were going to (laughs) say your ganache versus mine. Oh, I'm about ready to pass out. You have ganache your mom off. make ganache and my mom make ganache, and we'll see whose ganache is better. Ganache off. <laughs> ganache Mommy's off. ganache off. <laughs> mom's, mom's secret ganache. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was something very similar to that. That's how my Saturday was, and I totally bombed it. Sometimes it just doesn't work and out. You know what? I did take kind of, I t- kind of took the weekend off as well. I didn't do any work. I mean, like I That's had good. Monday's podcast. I had it done yeah, you did. on Friday. I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, message. you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to do it now and I'm going to, I'm going to kick it. I'm going to chill. Chill. And I didn't mean, I shouldn't have, I should have worked instead. I chilled, but I watched a samurai movie. It was great. Which one? I, I, I don't want to say because it's rated R. Oh, well, you can use VidAngel. It actually works quite well. On Netflix? Mm-hmm. So I can use, I can run VidAngel on Netflix. You can run your VidAngel, your Netflix account through VidAngel filtering. Yeah. And what does it filter out? Whatever you want. Does it filter out video as well? Well, you can do video, you can do audio, you can do scenes. It's actually quite impressive. I got to tell you, if I've vid, VidAngeled this movie but through You it, would watch like five minutes. <laughs> if that. <laughs> because VidAngel is uh, probably like... Bro, you shouldn't be watching any of this violence either. I don't know. Right? So how like, many filters do you want to set? Zero. Because I don't think there's any profanity in it. It's yeah. subtitled. It's Japanese. Well, it they could be cursing in violence? Japanese. Well, yeah. And there's a little bit of nudity in the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Gotcha. And then there's a lot of violence. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can with VidAngel. I don't know. Oh, you could say, hey, leave me the violence. You could, yeah. You could leave say, well, you could pick specific curse words. You could say, you know what? I just don't want any of the, the blasphemies, but everything else I'm cool with. I'm Whatever. Cool with. Yeah, drop F bombs to your heart's content. Yeah. Just don't blaspheme. Yeah, exactly. You can't. Oh, okay. Perfect. Or you can say, you could say no nudity. And they go, okay, what type? And you're like, okay, well, let's look at the list. And two nudity, <laughs> chick say, nudity, full yeah. nudity, yeah. partial nudity. Yeah, it breaks it all down. <laughs> you can say, okay. Yeah. Left breast, right breast, left cheek, <laughs> right cheek. Uh, <laughs> what are you good with? And I don't know if it goes that far. <laughs> but. It was a good service when uh, it first launched until the courts got involved and all that big Hollywood um, How dare you edit companies sued them. Yeah. For um, what? 
Well, because what they were doing is they found a loophole um, and they were using it to provide content. You know, because there are some movies that you're like, hey, this would be good. But then, you know, there's like two or three scenes or a handful of stuff. You just like, yeah, I wish I, I could just that. cut that out. Yeah, it adds it. nothing to the story. In yeah. fact, it takes away. Why is it even yeah. in there? Yeah. Fit Angel said, take it out. And it did it a lot. Very seamlessly. I was really impressed when I used it. Yeah. Uh, what they did, though, is because they rented movies or shows, but they bought a physical disc copy and stored it in a warehouse. And they said, you can stream it, but we have like 10 copies in our warehouse, so only 10 people can stream at once. I see. They weren't a digital, like they weren't, they found this like quasi loophole. They weren't paying for the digital stream right. thing. But they said, no, it. we actually bought physical copies. So like a new movie would come out, VidAngel would snatch up 10,000 copies. I see. And they had a physical copy for each person. I see. If it, too many of that people were watching that movie, you couldn't watch it. I see. Because they stayed within the law. But then they're like, hey, wait a minute, you can't do that. So they changed the law. And then they well, closed that They loophole. got sued, yeah. And they closed the loophole. And they call them. But now they've come out with a new service where you can actually connect. So you use Netflix, who has all the rights in the world, yeah. and it filters it through them. And you can say, cut out all language. Anyway. So cut out all violence. What are we talking about? You have like a five-minute movie. Well, we, we were yeah. talking about <laughs> entrepreneurship and its hard work. <laughs> and and how Angel. You need to take a, a break every once in a while. And this last weekend, I took the first break that I have in like two years where I did not do any Nothing. work. You just Netflix and chill. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. It was a Saturday. I Netflix was and chill. And I even smoked a cigar. And that's when one of the homies on Facebook said, "Oh, I love you know." I think I asked, "What else do you? What else? What are the, What else are your passions?" And he said, mm. uh, uh, "Was that James? I don't know. I can't remember who that Samurai was." Samurai movies and cigars. Cigar. So I went out and bought some cigars. Actually, I, I think I mailed coffee that day as well. So I did do a little bit of work. I lie. I lie. I drove to Mike's house. I picked up the coffee and I mailed it out. The coffee that we sold. But that makes sense. But I didn't generate any content, create any content, yeah. do anything like that. Gotcha. But I did drive around. And I, I was just kicking it. Just drive around. I was just driving around with my one of my I kids. I did get in the car. I did get in the car, drive around, mail your coffee out to you because I love you. And then I went home. Watch samurai movies, smoke cigars, and drink mojitos. And that was Saturday? Maybe I shouldn't tell anybody about the mojitos, but it's too late. Sorry. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. Was that Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I am I think, what, we're day six since we're recording of the World Cup? Something like that. Oh, I yeah. Probably have watched eight games. Nice. And what's the... Germany is down. They've lost... Well, when this airs, I think they will have played their second round, so we're a little oh, behind. Okay. We'll be a little behind. Right now, all they've done is lost to Mexico. World yes. Cup update. Yep, 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 yep. All right, 30 seconds of soccer. Go. And Argentina tied. So, you know, our teams, it can happen. You know, they say statistically when uh, a team loses their opener, it doesn't bode well for them for the rest of the competition. But uh, that doesn't mean that's the exciting thing about it. Is you never know. And I, I've really been enjoying... Uh, some of these teams like Panama, this is their first time there um, in their country's history. So it's, it's, you know, it means a lot to them, you know, when these. Well, I've, got, I've got some other names in there. Mike is going with Argentina. That's you. You're Mike. Mike Kincaid. Yeah, Jake. I chose I chose Argentina. I, I chose, chose Germany. Messi, really. Because I chose Germany. This is his last World Cup and he's never won. Rick chose England. Oh, Rick. Hey, they won. Rick chose England. Sam chose Brazil. And he thought it was um, interesting that two USA people were talking about soccer. So thank you, Sam. Appreciate that. Is we're that, not. Is we're that why our all, listenership dropped off? We're not <laughs> all uncouth barbarians, Sam. All right. Just because we're American doesn't mean we're barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I think I had some other ones, but I don't know where those emails are right now. But anyways, those are the two that just just came in the yesterday. Out. And we today, got so. one some which we can outs. include. Yeah. Um, Barista Spro says Portugal oh, overall. Okay. Barista Spro got Portugal. Yeah. Barista Spro. Por Portugal, actually, you know, they're looking Portugal. pretty good. Yeah. But like I said, there will be another round of games by the time you hear this, so we don't really know what's happening. So we don't really know. But if you submitted your name, you can be embarrassed when your team loses, like I was when Germany lost. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. They could still, you never Still know. pull it out. Yeah, still pull it out. Okay, what's next on the show? Oh, yeah, Mr. what were we doing? Oh, yeah, we're talking about ganache. Um, so, yeah, so we need to work on that. I need to get some more Monin, and we've just been drinking. We've just been drinking a lot of coffee without cream and sugar, 
um, if we've been doing anything, it's been a little bit of steamed milk. Like the cortados are my new go-to awesomeness. And Sunday we had people over and I made a ton of coffee for them. They loved the cold brew. They loved how smooth it was. Uh, they loved the cortado. They loved the espresso. They loved the chain fruit. They loved everything. Earth thing. Earth thing. Just mind blown. They're like, I've never experienced coffee like this before. Yeah. That's so. awesome. That's exciting. Speaking of milk, right? Yeah. You did mention milk in that list, I think. I did. Yes. Uh, I know Barista Hustle has a new course out. Barista about Hustle. Milk. Sounds pretty cool. It's like 50 lessons about the science of milk. You should check it out. Yeah, probably not. No, you won't. No. But I'm sure there's really good stuff there. If I'm sure you, there is really good stuff as well. Like actually getting into the chemistry of what it's doing and why it's doing it and choosing different milks and steaming and latte yeah. art, the yeah. whole thing. That sounds as good. As much as like you would stuff. want to know about milk and probably and coffee setting. And probably then a little just bit dropped more. a new course. Yeah. Yeah, it's anyway. probably worth doing. It's probably worth taking. Um, so. All right. So that's Barista Hustle. A couple milk. things yeah. here we can talk about. Yeah. One is... Um, I put this in as the brew tip because I thought it was good. The brew tip of We the brew. released that video in the, the BR. Brew and review. Yeah, when you were showing off the uh, Breville. Breville. Barista Express. Yeah. And um, a lot of people enjoyed that. And we actually had several people that said they loved theirs as well. Yeah. It's a great machine at that price point. And they said, but I use mine better than that idiot does. Well. I love mine. That, that, has, guy that goes without saying. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, I yeah. put that in the show yeah. notes. No, but there was some good tips. Yeah. And um, I don't think, you know, to your credit, it, it was kind of an impromptu, let's just shoot this, and you just did your thing. Just, well, just winged it um, with different with new coffee in there as well. Yeah, exactly. Like Not all the variables will set. But one of yeah. the things that we heard from two different people that has helped them with consistently pulling shots is wiping out the porter filter. Yeah, I started doing that. As soon as the comments went out there, hey, try wiping down your porter filter, porta filter. Yeah, porta. before you put the coffee in, I've been doing that. I've been doing it every time, and I've had, um, I don't know whether that's the one thing or whether it's because I've been dialing in a single coffee. I've been dialing in the Colombian mm -hmm. It's hard lately. to say. It's hard to say what it is, but I have added it to my habits, and I'm a habit type of, I, I build great. habits, and then, you know, I try to adjust those habits to uh, get a, you know, a better result, but I have definitely taken that into account and i have i've started doing that i start i wipe out the por porta filter so no. yeah that's I in reference to say porpoise i keep wiping <laughs> that porpoise out you know what good dolphin oh the porpoise good filter. porpoise good porpoise filter you keep your porpoise filter clean good job. and it will keep wipe you happy down. wipe that porpoise filter down. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, i think that's the key right with coffees removing the variables keeping the as many variables consistent mm -hmm. and so when you clean it right you preheat it wipe it out Put the next coffee in. Yeah. And in, in truthfulness, the, the comments, um, they, they were very nice. People were very yeah. friendly. Thank you, and Thank you for your comments. Offering, um, you know, things that have worked for them. That's all we do, right, is share what works for us. That's it. And together, all the boats. Magic. Rise. Yeah, well, or don't sink. Like if you, oh. I figured if you roped them all together and one then sank, the rest sink. would hold them. I say, well, hold it up. That's not a bad idea. All boats chained together stay afloat. Yeah. No, not working. Well, we could change it a little bit, make it a little, I don't know, more. No, it's pretty much perfect the way it is. All right, what's next? Okay, so next um, on the list, the official list, um, oh, decaf. Decaf. What's up with that? Decaf Let's is blasphemous, but maybe I'm jaded when really y'all I want to get is highly caffeinated. Decaf is an do you, abomination do you flex, bro? to mankind. Decaf should never be created, should have never been uh, created or drank uh, or consumed by anyone who cares about coffee. That is what I thought. I mean, I was a little bit of me was like, OK, fine, you do you. You know what I mean? Nope. But but just know that you're Sounds pretty you know, an uncircumcised Philistine. You're a heathen. Yeah. You're a heathen over Why there with your, you your decaf. This is your mentality? This is my mentality. Like, come on, man. What is the purpose of drinking decaf? It makes no sense. Yeah. Like like coffee. It's like taking a Coke and removing all the carbon. It's like it's kind of like drinking a Diet Coke, a flat Diet Coke. Yeah. It's like, I want a Coke minus the carbonation. You think, Have hmm. Kool-Aid. Hmm. Have Crystal Light. Just have, have some simple else. syrup. Yeah. It just doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Okay. I got gotcha. you. And then, and then what happened? Well, my mind was opened to a whole new world. 
a new fantastic point of view. Mike roasted a decaf that was Swiss water processed. Yes. It was Good Honto. Job. Good job. Proud and of you. it was banging. It was absolutely incredible. And so if you want like a decaf at night in the evening or you want coffee, let's just say you love coffee. You love coffee so much that you never want to put it down. You want to drink it morning, noon, and night, but you're a little sensitive to caffeine. Or a little bit. you just don't want to have all that much caffeine. You want to go decaf. Decaf. And there is good decaf out there. Decaffeinated. And the Swiss water process is like evil magic, but yeah. the result is good. It's witchcraft. -er. Yeah, it's witchcraft. It's like crazy witchcraft, but the result is delicious. So... I don't know what to do with that. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't know you. if there's On a moral all spectrum. <laughs> points. And, well, here's the question, though, that uh, I wanted to pose. Should we sell a decaf? Yes. Is there enough interest for us to buy, right, what we would buy normally to sell a decaf? And what makes it even a little bit tougher question is that good decaf is cheap. expensive. Yeah. Yes. So you're paying a premium for less you you mean chemically like yeah i'm getting i'm getting an like, inferior product I'm it is interesting less. you you took you <laughs> took all the caffeine out and, and now you're selling it to me not only that and you're charging me more then they take the caffeine i should and, get and they discount. sell it to <clears throat> food companies and pharmaceuticals yeah so they make, oh, they're double dipping it's like oh man it's like oh, the yeah. diesel conversation oh, that swp so, is killing it this is a byproduct and you're selling it to me for more Yes. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's my that's where I'm at with it because I agree. I think in the evening it's nice to have it. There's a lot of people are, are caffeine sensitive. And, in fact, we have an article I was going to bring up that we can link to that talks about the, the three different classifications of coffee drinkers. Oh, yeah. Who was that by? <clears throat> Frank. Frank. <clears throat> nice work, Frank. Yeah, Overman. He sent us uh, a link to an article, and um, maybe you'll find it interesting You'll put it in the show notes, I hope. Yeah, I'll put it in the oh, show notes nice. under resources at the bottom. And um, it just breaks down those that have different tolerance levels to certain types of caffeine. And, and some of it is strictly genetic. Um, so for those that are super sensitive or caffeine keeps them awake, a good decaf is just the thing. Just what the doctor Especially ordered. Especially when you're having a nice dessert. I, I feel you, though. And so if you had limitless funds and like bringing... A new product to market yeah. was relatively simple, but it's not simple for us because we're still relatively new bringing products to market. And not only is it a new product, but it's a new category. category. There is a lot that goes into us bringing a coffee to market. Not only do we buy samples or get samples, sometimes they're free. We roast, we cup, we mug, and then we buy. Once we buy the coffee, now we write up uh, info about it for the website, info for the cards. And if it's a decaf, means a new category, means we need new stickers for yeah, the bags. Yeah, but we got a sweet name already. But we got a sweet name. What's the name again? <laughs> I don't remember. It was like Night Night Fury. <laughs> no, it was Night Fury. No, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's that's definitely That's how to train Fury. your dragon. Oh, that's how to train your dragon. Oh, uh, uh, okay. And okay. that's not Night Owl. Night Owl. That's another coffee company. It's yeah. Night... Night Bloom? Blossom? Night, night Bloom. The Night Bloom. Is that it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we got something. I it's promise. It's the night bloom. Yeah. It's the night bloom. There it's you a go. uh uh Pinio Sirius Greggy. <laughs> what? That's the oh, name Pino. that's the name of the cactus. That's the um <laughs> Sirius Greggy. Yeah. Sirius Greggy. Pinio Sirius Sirius Greggy. Greggy. That's great. <laughs> we should call it the Moly, like Greg's their Moly. <laughs> we should call it the Moly. Serious Greg. <laughs> Are you serious, Greg? Right now? You're serious? Yeah. You want decaf? Yeah, that's the night bloom. That's funny. That is the night bloom. Because you're right. Right now, we could um, add another coffee. And I've been contemplating, what would I add? Yeah. Do I stick with what I got? Just buy more because there is uh, some new lots available? Or do we go with a decaf? Part of me wants to be selfish and say, I want a decaf. I think it would be fun to have um, something new. But it's not uh, not cheap. So. Yeah. The decaf that you had, the Honduras, we, we got um, from Genuine Origin, is still available. And I'm very tempted really? to just buy a hmm. box of it. Very tempted. Hmm. Anyway, so I don't know. 
Give us your thoughts. You like decaf? Do you find its place? Do you think it's uh, blasphemous as a Jake once did? Or, um, you know, and also, what was it when we were talking about decaf before? Our friend in Italy said, hey, no, that was instant coffee. Never mind. Yeah, it was instant coffee. He, so, all right, that's all I got. Next on the list is we wanted to continue our trip down the coffee knowledge highway. And our driver um, for this latest trip has been Ryan Brown, who has uh, penned the great book, Dear Coffee Buyer. Uh, it's been a few episodes, but we've been going through the pro- different processing methods. We've done wet, we've done dry, and now we are going to talk about pulped natural process, mm. a.k.a. Honey. 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 What is honey? It's a pulp natural process. It's where they take the uh, cherry, right, and they pulp honey. It? Honey all over it. Yeah, they drip, drizzle it with honey, and then they throw it in the roaster, and then they spray it with cinnamon flavorings, artificial cinnamon flavor. Artificial cinnamon flavor. So, Jake, you ready? What I, I was I was going to hand this over for you to read. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I think, um, I think the audience likes when you read to them. I, I think so, too. Hey, I finally got uh, one note up and going. Oh, so, good. Perfect. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Yeah. The most prominent of the remaining processes to discuss are pulped natural and honey. Or Mm. meal, both of which involve pulping the coffee fruit with or without use of a mechanical demulsilager. Demulsilager? Mucilage. Mucilager. 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 (laughs) Mucilager. Great word. Lager? Mucilager? (laughs) Demucilager or mucilager? I think it's mucilage, right? Mucilage. How about demucilager? Demucilager. Mucilager. How about I just say it real fast and then you won't know what demucilager. How about I say that every time I have to blow my nose? Ha! (laughs) Excuse me. I had a (coughs) demucilager over here. Okay. And then allowing it to dry with some or all of the mucilage sticking to the seed's parchment. Brazil pioneered the pulp natural process with the goal of reducing water usage in the washed process. And ostensibly, Costa Rica coined the term honey process. Hmm. And in most cases, that's the extent of the difference. Because of snobbery... Yeah, yeah. Most of Central America has adopted Costa Rica's terminology, but don't be fooled. Pulped natural and honey are routinely the same process, transpiring in different locales. Among the primary choices a producer makes when preparing a pulped natural or honey coffee is the amount of mucilage left on the bean for drying. Oh, there we go. The character of most of these coffees is similar to that of their washed counterparts, albeit usually with less pronounced acidity, more body, and often more fruited flavors. My experiences shipping honey coffees have been less than great, as I have found that much of the aromatic nuisance and acidity diminished quickly. So you're kind of getting flat. Yeah. Nuance? Oh, hi. As I have found that much of the aromatic nuance and acidity diminished quickly. (laughs) That sounds better. This this nuisance and these aromatics are... I hate (laughs) these aromatics. Uh, nice. Is that, nice. Uh, is that all we got? Yeah, that's it. There was a pretty picture on the next page. Yeah, there was there? a pretty picture. Of processing. But you shouldn't show that. Don't show that to the camera. They got to buy the book. Oh, yeah. That. No, I haven't showed it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great picture. Because remember, I, th- I said it was a picture book. <laughs> you did. No, he said it was a, it's an illustrative, an illustrative book, right? <laughs> it's a graphic novel, pretty much. You know? Pretty much. Pretty oh, much. This is and then sweet, Ryan though. reached out and said, no, there's, there's words in there, idiot. Just open it up and it'll be self-explanatory. <laughs> Look, it's a, it's like an info picture yeah. with the different natural, yeah. pulp natural, wet, yeah. pulled, washed. and wash. And then hull, dry, soak, wash, ferment, mucilage, <clears throat> pulp, float, and pick. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is a great it picture. It is pretty cool. I want a poster of this. I always wondered about honeys, though. Because that's a funny statement. <laughs> she gives me the honey glow, something fierce. I mean, because I've yet to have like a really great honey, you know what I mean? They're kind of flat, <laughs> they're, all just, they're kind of flat. Flat, yeah, I've never been excited about it. To me, it's like, uh, why didn't you just go full natty? Yeah, what's, what's the why deal don't here? you go oh, natural? <laughs> why did you stop halfway? Go all, just commit, just either be washed or nattied. Yeah. Yeah. Either wash or well, go natural. And I've found and will continue in our in our journey in the book, but there's so many variations, right? And they have different names and they have the black honey, the red honey, the white honey. And as as Ryan pointed out, they're all just pulp natural. They're all kind of like fancy lingo, but Yeah, snobbery. It's all snobbery. Snobbery. 
So anyway. That's why I say rock natty. Natty or uh, washed. So I was going to say natty or naked. I'm like, oh, what is <laughs> something? Too much coffee today, I think. We've had way too much coffee. Uh, so were these, are these the clothes or the, <laughs> the naked beans? Which ones we got here? Those are the natural. Oh, okay. These are the so bottomless. Grotesque. These are the ones. These are the, these are the, the half. Half clothes. Oh, clove. man. Uh, so and, that, that's yeah. it. That's what we got. I think, I think we should end this before it ends us. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end with us. As always, you can find the show notes at orangecactuscoffee.com forward slash episode one, two, four. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening.